Good evening, everyone. I am Angela Corey, the special prosecutor for the Trayvon Martin case. Just moments ago, we spoke by phone with Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin. It was less than three weeks ago that we told those sweet parents that we would get answers to all of their questions, no matter where our quest for the truth led us. And it is the search for justice for Trayvon that has brought us to this moment. The team here with me has worked tirelessly looking for answers in Trayvon Martin's death. I want to introduce to you Bernie Delarionda, one of my top homicide prosecutors, and John Guy, my other top homicide prosecutor who will lead this investigation. With us also is Jim Madden from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Dominic Pape, also one of our special agents in charge, our sheriff, John Rutherford, and our undersheriff, Dwayne Centerfit. We appreciate so much all of their cooperation in this. And I especially want to thank my two state attorney investigators, T.C. Osteen and Dale Gilbreth, who have spent countless hours doing what they do best, investing, investigating homicides. Oh, excuse me. Allow me to take a moment to acknowledge our governor, Rick Scott, and his office. Attorney General Pam Bondi and her office, along with our U.S. Attorney Bobby O'Neill, for their continuing support of our appointment to this case and their support of this investigation. We spoke with all of them briefly and informed them of the results of our investigation and our plan as we continue. I can tell you we did not come to this decision lightly. This case is like a lot of the difficult cases we have handled for years here in our circuit and we've made this decision in the same manner. Let me emphasize that we do not prosecute by public pressure or by petition. We prosecute based on the facts of any given case as well as the laws of the state of Florida. When they appointed us to this case less than three weeks ago, I want you to know that these two fine prosecutors, despite all that is on their plate already, handling all of the homicides in the Fourth Judicial Circuit, supervising the other young lawyers who also handle homicides, they willingly took this case on and said, we will lead this effort to seek justice for Trayvon. We launched an intensive investigation building on all of the work that Sanford Police Department and the State Attorney's Office in Seminole County had already done. Unless you've ever been a law enforcement officer or a prosecutor handling a difficult homicide case, you cannot know what it's like to launch this type of investigation and come to the right conclusion. The Supreme Court has defined our role on numerous occasions as prosecutors that we are not only ministers of justice, we are seekers of the truth. And we stay true to that mission. Again, we prosecute on facts and the laws of the great and sovereign state of Florida, and that's the way it will be in this case. When we took our oath of office in 2009, we pledged not only to look out for our precious victims of all of our cases, but also to adhere to the rules of the criminal justice system and the rules of our Constitution and statutes that protect a defendant's rights as well. When we charge a person with a crime, we are equally committed to justice on their behalf as we are on our victim's behalf. So we are here to do that on behalf of our victim, Trayvon Martin, and on behalf of the person responsible for his death, George Zimmerman. We will continue to seek the truth throughout this case. Every single day, our prosecutors across this great country handle difficult cases, and they adhere to that same standard, a never-ending search for the truth and a quest to always do the right thing for the right reason. There is a reason cases are tried in a court of law, not in the court of the public, and not by the media, because details have to come out in excruciating and minute fashion detail by detail, bit of evidence by bit of evidence. And it's only then when the trier of fact, whether it's a judge or a jury, gets all of those details that then the law is applied to that and a decision can be rendered. We will scrupulously adhere to our ethical obligations and to the rules of evidence in presenting this case that way. Today we filed an information charging Z George Zimmerman with murder in the second degree. A capius has been issued for his arrest. 
With the filing of that information and the issuance of a capius, he will have a right to appear in front of a magistrate in Seminole County within 24 hours of his arrest, and thus formal prosecution will begin. We thank all of those people across this country who have sent positive energy and prayers our way. We ask you to continue to pray for Trayvon's family as well as for our prosecution team. I want to especially thank Mr. Crump and Mr. Parks who have stayed in touch daily with us on behalf of our victim's family. Remember, it is Trayvon's family that are our constitutional victims and who have the right to know the critical stages of these proceedings. You have been listening now to Angela Corey. She is the special prosecutor in Florida announcing there that uh, they are going to be charging George Zimmerman with second degree murder in the shooting death of 17 year old Trayvon Martin, that unarmed teen in Florida, the case that's just been getting national headlines for weeks now. Very interesting. It took her a long time to get to what the charges would be there, but she did say that they do not prosecute by public pressure or by petition. And there certainly has been a whole lot of that over the last month or so. And Mrs. Corey, over the last couple of days, uh, uh, we've gotten to know her just a little bit. She's been known to be very tough and independent, and she said she was not going to take this case to the grand jury and that she would make the charging decision on her own. And without the grand jury, couldn't right. be first-degree murder. And so We just got the news right now, and actually the Associated Press is reporting that George Zimmerman is already in custody. She did not mention that, but she that's what not. the AP is reporting right now. Well, we'll keep you posted on the status of that. Meantime, people in the metro area have been watching this investigation very closely, and people in metro Detroit have very different feelings about the case. 7 Action News reporter Cheryl Choden is live in the news center area right now with what people are telling her. Hey, Cheryl. Well, Michael, hi, Michael. Well, there is reaction to what was just announced in Florida just a few moments ago, and there was reaction because since this happened on February 26th, there have been so many versions and so many stories about what happened. Trayvon Martin's death sparked protest all across the country, actually in Detroit as well. Way so we talked the to Sanford, the president please. of the NAACP, the Reverend Wendell Anthony, just a few moments ago, and his reaction to George Zimmerman being charged. The family needs closure. Trayvon Martin is dead. He should not be dead. Mr. Zimmerman has been out for something like 43, 44 days since this occurred. And so we're pleased that he's finally being brought to trial and justice should prevail. The Justice Department is involved in this. The FBI is involved in this. Groups all around the country are involved in this. So it does not end with the charges being brought. It ends when justice prevails. Okay. The Reverend well, Anthony says, outsiders, of course, we can't know all the facts of the case. And he said he's very interested to watch what comes out at trial. There are people on both sides of this case. Some people thought George Zimmerman should not be charged. And the Reverend Anthony urges those people as well to watch how this plays out in trial and listen to the facts of the case. We'll be hearing more reaction from people as the time goes on and as this trial takes place. Reporting live in the News Center area, I'm Cheryl Choden, 7 Action News.